we've got a little project today. We're basically going to take one of these handle holders and we're going to convert it into a display case that has lights on the inside and everything like that. First thing up, I'm going to throw up a picture of uh, all the tools you're going to need to do this project. First thing we're going to do is throw up some blue paper tape. And basically what I'm going to do is this open hole here. I'm going to tape that off. We're going to kind of do a rough measurement so we know what size of our sheet metal we need to cut. So we're going to have to do some trimming on these pieces of sheet metal once we get uh, it all roughed in. Just because this thing's bounced around in shipping and it might not be perfectly straight. So we're going to get it close to what we want it to be. And then we'll adjust each piece individually. So what I'm doing is I've got the paper tape in right now and I'm just throwing in a, a line. And it doesn't have to be exact. We're just kind of splitting the middle of the shape. Okay. And we don't need to go that high up. Just need to go because we want somewhere for the epoxy to glue together so we don't get light leaks. Okay. And then I'm just going to just in case the paper tape comes apart, I'm putting a couple reference marks on that. Yes. So we'll go ahead and set this off to the side for a minute. All right. So we're cutting out the paper tape to the shape that we want it to be. Take our piece of sheet metal, put the blade away so we don't stab ourselves. So what we're going to do is lay out the piece of tape pattern that we have onto the sheet metal. And this piece is just a one foot by one foot piece of sheet metal I got from uh, Home Depot. And I think it was five or six bucks. So not too much on that end. And I'm just using a Sharpie to mark our pattern. So we're going to need four of these. And then we'll take our 10 snips. And we'll cut ourselves uh, out some shapes. We got all four of our pieces. Let's see how well we did. We're a little bit off, it looks like. So we go. All right, up like that. So we'll trim it up. And then clip off just the tip of the corners. And we'll see how we did. There we go. So that looks good there. So we're going to mark which one it fits. Okay, so we've got all the pieces cut out. What we're going to do now is grab a little bit of epoxy, mix that up, put one piece at a time in. So what I like to use as clamps occasionally are these number one clamps. They're one inch clamps. Uh, they're like 25, maybe 50 cents at Home Depot each. And they're great. They've got a little spring in them. They're called pony clamps sometimes, grip clips, but it'll just go right in here and hold down nice and tight for us and hold everything in place. So I'm gonna leave the front open. I think we're gonna start with the left-hand side, work our way around and then do the front end first so we can go through the door and hold everything in place.
to all four sides of this. So we've got the epoxy added. And then while we've got this all clamped down, we're just going to go through and wipe off the excess epoxy that's uh, started to be squeezed out by the clips. So we have everything clamped off. So we're just going to push it off to the side. Drink a cup of coffee. And watch a couple YouTube videos. Okay. So it should be all dry. Nice. So set these off to the side for a minute. All right. So we want the back one. So left's in. Oh, look, you guys can see what I'm watching on the on the TV there. If you don't know what camera conspiracies is, watch them. I enjoy it. Makes me giggle. All right. So when we put it in, it's not quite lining up. So we're a little bit off. So we'll go back through and yep. So looking at it, we're gonna have to do a little trimming. And that's just because this thing rattles so goddamn much. So just because of the thickness of it, it just threw it off a little bit. So we're just going to go through and trim up the edge. And we'll probably have to do this with each of the pieces. So we got it all glued together. Everything's set. Now what we're going to do is run the hole for the power and the LED lights. So I'm going to put it on the back side so you can't really see it. Luckily, this it's got this piece of metal on each of the corners. Luckily, the metal's not too thick, so we can easily just... I mean, it's just a trim piece of metal came off fairly easily. What we're going to wind up doing is drilling a hole in this back corner so it'll feed up inside for the LEDs. So we'll grab our wire here and our drill bits. And let's see, let's go with... If you're not sure which one to use, just, you know, put it, hold it up to the wire and see which one works. So what you want to do is look and see where the glass is. You don't want to drill into the glass. So we want to go up at an angle. Uh, I already kind of scoped it out before I put in the plates, but I think if we just go directly in the corner and go up, I think we'll be okay. Well, maybe not directly in the corner. We'll go right about here. So we've got our hole drilled right in there. What we're gonna do is take our cable uh, or our wire. Now this is 20-02 wire. We're just gonna slide it right in that hole. Go up inside. So. Then we're just gonna We'll feed a little bit extra in. There we go. So we got that all wired up. Up next, we're gonna get our LED strip and some cutters. So this has a little plug-in spot. So it's a little too big to fit in our hole. Plus it's not, you know, the cable's not long enough to reach all the way down to the base. So what we're gonna do is give this a little cut. I'm just gonna go right in here like so. So we got it cut. This, we're going to stick at the bottom, down by where this wire is. This one's going to go towards the top. So what we're going to do is take off the sheeting. There we go. And then we've got a black and a red wire. So I'm going to keep the red with the red, and the white and the black will be... Uh... And then we'll take them and bend them over a little bit, and make kind of hooks. 
And then what we got here is some heat shrink tubing. So what we're gonna do is just slide the heat shrink tubing on before we do anything else. One on each side. There we go. And then we're gonna strip these wires. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna, now this wire is a little bit stiffer, but we're just gonna make our own hooks. Same thing we did with the other one. Just like so. so. We're gonna turn on our soldering iron. And while that's warming up, we're gonna match our colors. Red to red. Press it down, white to black. And we'll go ahead and give it a little crimp on this uh, firmer wire. And then we've got our solder. And what we're gonna do is just heat that up a little bit. There we go. And then, so it kind of got stuck. We're gonna heat this back up and then we'll straighten this up. You don't want to bend in the wire because that will make the heat shrink not stick. There we go. So we're straight now and we'll do the same thing to this other side. There we go. We got that all soldered up. So we're going to slide on the heat shrink tubing. Okay, so we've got our heat shrink tubing on. We don't need the soldering iron on right now. So we'll set that off to the side again. What we do need is the heat gun. So we got that all heated up. So now the heat shrink is still a little, a little warm, so it's a little sticky. So I, I like to press it together. So we are all set up. So we'll back feed our wire back through. Now that we've got that set, what we're gonna do is take our glue gun and just add a little bit of glue to the wire to hold it in place. So we'll just hold that down, let that dry. So you might be tempted to wrap the LED wires around, inside, uh, the LED lights around on the inside right now. Don't do that yet, because you wanna wire up the base first and then test it, make sure it works. We've got that wrapped back up and now we've got our plug that we're gonna use. So now we gotta find a spot for where we want it. I'm gonna put it down towards the bottom here. We're gonna go right in here. So we're gonna get our drill again. Okay, so we drilled our hole through the metal. We just barely touched the wood. So what we're gonna do now is pry up our metal. So we just, these number one clips were great for that because they're thin. So we're just gonna, there we go. So we've got a little notch there for the cable. And we will just go right like so, and then press that piece of metal back down. And there we are. So now we'll do the same thing we did with the other end. Got the strippers. There we go. So we've got our, got our dimmer switch and we've got our power cable. So plug that in, hit the dimmer. Ooh, look at that. So it works. Nice. So let's stick our wiring right there. So whatever excess wire you have, you can just push up in there a little bit. And then we've got our, our bent up bar here. There we go. And 
and push it back in place. Nice. Just tuck these wires in underneath. Just hit it with a little bit of glue. So we're just gonna hot glue the wires in place. So once this dries, we'll paint that so it's all black, so it disappears. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take our wire, see how much we need to go around. So there's one, and this is just a dry fit. Same as, just get that tucked up in there. And then look at how many times we're gonna go around. One. I don't think we'll need more than two times around. So, go ahead and cut this here at this junction. That way we can use it later if we need to. So we'll set this off to the side. So now this does have sticky tape on the back. There we go. So we won't pull it all off, just part of it. And then we'll stick that to the back side. We got that all stuck in place. Now what I'm gonna do, okay, so we got it all up in here, but I'm not 100% sure on how good the sticky tape is. So what we're gonna do is take our glue gun and just put a couple tags on that LED strip to hold it in place. And the reason why I'm using the hot glue in case you're wondering why it's not something maybe more permanent, is in case something goes wrong, maybe we'll have to go through and replace the LEDs or something at some point. With the hot glue, it'll be a lot easier to peel that off. So we got this bad boy back. So I went with this Rust-Oleum matte hammered, kind of like a steel color uh, for the top, but I wanted it kind of distressed. So we're gonna use this water-based uh, paint. We're gonna brush the water-based paint on and then wipe it off. So we've got a brush, a rag, and the paint. crevices. Okay. So we're going to set that off the side. Now we've got a clean rag and we're just going to wipe in one direction. You don't want to rub it. You just kind of want to wipe in one direction. You don't want to start and stop. You just kind of want to You want some of the steel exposed. And the nice thing about it, if you go a little bit too much, like I think we did here, just push that back up on there. And let's take a look. Yeah. So if we just go, if we go a little bit too heavy with the rag, it's okay. happy with that and how it looks kind of all distressed and old. I'm gonna set this off to the side and then we'll be right right back once it dries and I'll show you what it looks like uncovered. Okay so here we are all dried out. Okay so we got it all it's all dry test her out and see. So 
We've got a bottle of Buffalo Trace, just as a little example. So thanks for hanging out with me for this build. I think it turned out really well. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys. All the parts will be listed in the description box down below. And I'll see you next time.